no fluff, no nonsense, just everything you need to know about the ketogenic diet, whether you want to get started or you've been successfully doing it for a long time. I'm going to give you the facts, going to give you the literature and break it all down. Now, I saw that Dr. Oz did a video on everything there is to know about the ketogenic diet. And although I really do enjoy some of Dr. Oz's stuff, I felt like the video left a lot to be desired. So I wanted to do this video to break it down in a little bit more depth. Now, what is the ketogenic diet? Now, the ketogenic diet is a sustainable, enjoyable, high fat, moderate protein, low carb lifestyle, quite honestly, that's based on evolutionary logic and rigorous scientific literature. There is so much science backing up the ketogenic diet. I think we're in really good shape when we look at the overall health effects and what it's going to do for our body composition and for a multitude of other things. But before I get into the diet specifically, we have to talk about what the ketogenic diet is about. Like, what are ketones? Okay, because the ketogenic diet is all about creating ketones. Ketones are beta-hydroxybutyrate, acetoacetate, and acetone. Now, before you click off this video because you think it's going to go way down the rabbit hole of science, I'm not even going to go into detail on those ketone bodies. I just want to explain that these are the ketones that the body creates. Ketones are basically a fourth macronutrient. Okay, our macronutrients that we know are proteins, and fats, and carbohydrates. But ketones are sort of a miraculous fourth macronutrient, although we don't find it in nature. Our liver creates it. Our liver creates this whole separate macronutrient that gets treated in the body in a different way than proteins, fats, or carbohydrates. So we're going to break down why these ketones are awesome and why you need them and why you lose so much weight on the keto diet. Hey, I do want to make sure that you hit that red subscribe button. Okay, I've got videos coming out all the time, almost every single day, keto, fasting, general health, you name it. So please go ahead and join the multiple million subscribers that I have in getting on top of your health. And hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications so you never miss a beat. All right, let's go ahead and break it down. Why do we need ketones? Like, why does our body even create them in the first place? It seems like it's not just for weight loss, right? See, it comes down to the fact that our brains draw so much energy from our bodies. We don't realize that this little two to three pound brain inside of our head uses up like 25% of our daily energy needs. That is a lot of energy. And the crazy thing is people don't realize this, but the brain actually runs mainly on glucose. Okay. So what that means is that when we are in periods of starvation or when we can't have carbohydrates for whatever reason, from an evolutionary standpoint, this would happen all the time. It would mean that the body would have to start breaking down our proteins in our muscles and in our joints in order to create glucose to fuel our demanding brain. Now, show me the logic in that being an efficient process. Why would our body want to sacrifice all of its own tissue just to fuel the brain. That's where ketones come in. So the body has a mechanism where it says, oh, if there's no carbohydrates, we shift the fuel source over to ketones. The liver starts creating ketones, which happen to fuel the brain and fuel the body perfectly, if not better than glucose. So that's how this all comes into equation. It's simply that. It's an evolutionary logical thing, but it also has more to do with just enhanced metabolic health. So that's why ketones are so important and why we actually have them. But how do these ketones actually have us lose weight? How do they affect us there? Well, for one, just the act of going into the ketogenic diet forces us to utilize fats for fuel. Okay, we always kind of have this barrier between us, right, with carbohydrates. Whereas if our body learns how to use fats because we're on a ketogenic diet, the cellular tissues actually begin metabolizing that fat for fuel, which allows us to stay very lean because the fat that's on our body becomes an avid fuel source, right? The other thing is it lowers insulin. Insulin is a fat storing hormone. Despite what some people will say, insulin is the absorptive hormone. And if insulin is high in the blood or even activated, we're going to be storing. So if insulin is low because we're on the ketogenic diet, we're in a good spot and we're much less likely to store fat even if we're not actively burning it at that point in time. Now, let's back this up with some research because that's just kind of how I roll. There's a study that was published in the journal Lipids. Took a look at 40 individuals and it put them on either a high-fat, low-carb ketogenic diet 
or a high carb, low fat diet. Okay, and it measured them for about 12 weeks, and it wanted to take a look at a couple of different things. But basically what they did is they took the keto group and they said, okay, eat as much food as you want. And they ended up capping out at about 1,500 calories because the keto diet is so satiating. So the keto diet group ate about 1,500 calories. And then the high carb group, what they did is they had them match calories to the keto group. So they ended up being matched at about 1,500 calories. So at the end of the day, it was eucaloric. They both ate the same amount of calories. They just let the keto diet kind of pave the way. Now, what they found at the end of the study is nothing short of just insane. The keto diet group, even though they ate the same amount of calories as the other group, lost twice as much weight. Okay, not just a couple pounds, twice as much weight. Okay, they also had improvements in their overall lipid profile. They had a decrease in their triglyceride levels. Lots of positive things. Now, I will say their LDL did increase, but that's not always a bad thing because the very small particle LDL that's the bad LDL, there was a decrease in that. So they actually had an improvement in their overall total lipid profile. Now, that's one cool study, but there's some new Harvard research that absolutely blew me away when I read it. And this is some new stuff, so now I'm sharing it with you and kind of disseminating this information. This took a look at 162 people divided into three groups, and these three groups all ate 2,000 calories to start. They had a high-carb, low-fat group, they had a moderate-carb, moderate-fat, moderate-protein group, sort of a standard diet, and then they had a low-carb, ketogenic diet. Again, started them all at 2,000 calories. And here's what's interesting about this study. Okay, not only was it very controlled, but instead of just seeing how much weight they would lose, they wanted to see if the metabolism would improve. So what they did is they said, okay, we want you to maintain your weight for 20 weeks on these diets. So we're gonna feed you exactly what needs to be fed in order to maintain your weight. Basically, they're trying to see if the metabolism got faster. Want to know something wild? At the end of 20 weeks, they were having to feed the ketogenic diet group people 209 more calories than when they started, and way more than the other groups, showing that the ketogenic diet boosted the metabolism to the point that even for these subjects to maintain weight, they had to eat over 200 calories more than they were before. So they, were, they shifted to a keto diet, and suddenly their body's incinerating more fuel. Pretty cut and dry, right? So then that begs the question, okay, like I'm sold, Thomas, I want to do the keto diet. Well, what can I eat? Okay, well, the thing is, there's a lot of different things that you can eat. And I've done a lot of different videos that literally break down diet plans that like I put on video for free. I want people to learn how to do this right. But I'll put all those in the description, but what's important is that you know the basics of it. Meats. You can eat meats. You can eat your grass-fed, grass-finished beef. Okay, you can eat your good quality uh, pork. You can eat your good quality pork chops. You can eat your good quality bacon. You can eat game meats. You can eat venison. You can eat poultry. So chicken, turkey, all of that stuff is good to go. You can eat a pigeon if you wanted to. Then we move into some of the other ones. We've got eggs. You can eat eggs and don't worry about the cholesterol because honestly your body needs the cholesterols, especially on the ketogenic diet. Cheeses, guess what? Almost all cheeses are fair game. Now, I'm critical of some cheeses because as you get down the ketogenic rabbit hole, I think that you should probably pay attention to eating cleaner cheeses. But for all intents and purposes, cheese is good to go. Maybe not processed cheese, but enjoy it, okay? Coconut, tons and tons of coconut. One of the best sources of medium chain triglycerides and good healthy fats that you could possibly get. So I highly recommend eating lots of coconut. Okay, then nuts. Honestly, some nuts have higher carbs than others, but again, for most of it, you can eat all the nuts. Okay, you can eat walnuts, you can eat pecans, almonds, cashews, one of my personal favorites, macadamia nuts. Okay, all of these are good to go. Now, when it comes down to seeds, you can enjoy your seeds too. So that means you can have uh, chia seeds, you can have your flax seeds, you can have pepitas, you can have sunflower seed, anything like that, and you're good to go. Okay, veggies. Just because you're not consuming carbohydrates doesn't mean that you can't eat veggies, okay? There's some that you shouldn't have. Maybe you shouldn't have high sugar veggies, like maybe bell peppers or something, but all the leafy greens, you're good to go. Most of even the starchy veggies, like a lot of squashes and things like that, you can have spaghetti squash, zucchini, all that. You can have a lot of these veggies. And the cool thing is you can make zoodles with zucchini, so you have noodles. And, I mean, you can make lasagna out of zucchini. Like you can actually like slice the zucchini. There's so many things and so many recipes. And again, I've got them on my channel, so you're never gonna like run out of them. Then oils, okay, people think oil is just canola oil. You've got so many different options. Coconut oil, palm oil, avocado oil, macadamia nut oil, walnut oil, 
so many different choices. Trust me, you're never going to fall victim to like not enough food. Like there's plenty of food to go around. Now, I will say with the meats, the one thing that you want to pay attention to is your system is running clean on a keto diet. So you want to make sure you're getting grass fed, grass finished. Spend a couple extra dollars and get the good stuff. But actually, by the way, if you guys do eat good quality meat, I highly recommend check out ButcherBox down below in the description. So I work with ButcherBox, so I do some stuff for them. So that means I get you guys special pricing on it. But ButcherBox gives you grass-fed, grass-finished, the highest quality grass-fed, grass-finished meat that you can get. And it ends up being cheaper than it is at the grocery store and it's delivered right to your doorstep. So these people have nailed it. Okay, I've worked with them for a long time and even helped them with some research and stuff like that. So literally you go to the grocery store and you're gonna spend X number of dollars per pound Plus you have to drive to the grocery store. ButcherBox ends up making it so you get better quality meat and it's delivered to your doorstep. So, I mean, you save money two ways and then you save it a third way because I have special pricing if you're watching this video. So after you watch this video, check them out down in the description. You honestly don't wanna miss out on that because it's a great opportunity and it's great pricing that you're not gonna see anywhere else. So now let's go ahead and talk about if it's hard or not. Okay, because you might be wondering, okay, this sounds great and it sounds like there's a lot of food options, but is it hard? Am I gonna encounter a lot of barriers and like have to jump over a bunch of hurdles? Truth be told, with any diet change, you're going to have to have a degree of adaptation, right? It's gonna be a little bit difficult for your body to just adjust at first. But I will say that ongoing data from the Verta Health Study, uh, which is a very well-known and very well-regarded ongoing study, has found that not only the ketogenic diet reversing type 2 diabetes, but it also has a 74% success and retention rate after two years. That's higher than anything else in the world of diets. So that retention rate, that success rate, people are still happy after two years of eating this lifestyle because they don't feel like they're deprived of anything. It's that amazing. This might be a fun time for me to actually mention, just in case you didn't know, that I was 280 pounds before. Okay, I lost 100 pounds utilizing the ketogenic diet and utilizing intermittent fasting. And if you don't know my story, it's because I don't taunt it everywhere. I don't flaunt it all the time, right? I don't wave it in front of people because it's not who I am today. But the truth is, is I lost a lot of weight and I'm indebted to the ketogenic diet and it's made a big difference in my life. And I like to share that information. And some people might watch this video and be like, this is so one-sided for the ketogenic diet. Maybe it is, but I also look at the research, but I also look at my own personal experience. So it's just a good time to mention that. Okay, let's take a look really quick at keto adaptation. We might be wondering what keto adaptation is. That's, that's the period of time that it takes for your cells to get accustomed to using fat for fuel. So it varies. It can take as little as 10 days to as long as three months to really start getting adapted. But studies have shown that the keto adaptation phase actually continues on for years, meaning you get more and more efficient at utilizing ketones. So it's like it just gets better and better. I've been doing keto for close to nine years. And it just, I still uncover more efficiency and like I'm getting sharper and cleaner and leaner every turn. It's really amazing. So one thing that you need to know is that the mitochondria, which is where energy is kind of manufactured in the body, goes through what's called biogenesis, mitochondrial biogenesis. So mitochondria dies off and then it creates new mitochondria. So it takes time for each generation of mitochondria to slowly make the adaptation. So that's been shown that it takes, you know, probably about 10, 12 weeks or so for the mitochondria to start to develop that affinity for fats. So you, what I'm saying here is give yourself at least 10 to 12 weeks before you feel really, really good on keto. The first few weeks you might feel a little bit lethargic. It's kind of the keto flu stuff where your body's just adjusting, your minerals are out of whack. Just hang in there. Which kind of leads me into the next part, getting started. Like how do you get started? Okay, you're watching this video, you're like, I love this. Someone shared this video with me and now I'm watching it and I want to start the keto diet. What do I do? The first thing to reference is just the simple macros that you need to follow. Okay, that's going to be 75% fat, 20% protein calories and 5% carbs, give or take. That's just kind of a rough idea, right? Now I will say, uh, in the description below, I have linked out to some videos that I've done that actually give basic keto meal plans just to get started. And these aren't things I'm selling or anything like that. They're videos that break down what the keto diet is about and what you can eat and what you can do if you're starting, okay? So the four week keto diet, the beginner guide to keto diet, all that stuff I put down just so I don't have to spare you, I can spare all the time here. We don't have to waste the time here. Okay, so it's very, very important just that you learn how to do it right so you have the most success. Another thing you wanna do is you wanna track your ketones, at least when you get started. You can use the urine strips, but the problem with the urine strips is they measure excess ketones. They don't measure what your body's actually utilizing. So 
I recommend using uh, blood testing. I know you have to prick your finger, you don't have to do it, but just do it for a little while until you realize what kind of things you can get away with eating, because some people can eat more carbs than others, and some people this and that. You just want to find your sweet spot, okay? The macros that I laid out, that's kind of my sweet spot, and it is for a lot of other people, but you have to find your own sweet spot. So outside of weight loss, are there other benefits? Like what other things can we expect with the ketogenic diet? Well, the first one is you're gonna fight cravings. So whether you struggle with your weight or not, if you're someone that deals with cravings, then you probably wanna try the keto diet just so you don't have to deal with them anymore. Number two, energy, okay? So I've already lost the weight, personally. I continue to do keto because I like the cognitive energy. I like the energy I get up here, but I like the physical energy. I feel like I can run a marathon every day. Not that I would, but I have the energy to work out at 4.30, 5 a.m. Like I didn't have that before, especially when I was overweight. Okay, then three, the reversal of diabetes. Now I'm careful to say it can reverse diabetes. So that's a pretty, pretty outlandish claim, I've, I would say, you know, just for me to say. But the studies do say that they have seen evidence of reversing diabetes, all because of the controlling of insulin. So that's a powerful thing. In fact, uh, there's a study that was published in the Frontiers of Endocrinology that showed that people that were diabetic that were on the ketogenic diet actually ended up having an 81% reduction in the overall amount of insulin that they had to take. They reduced their insulin medication. So powerful effects that's, again, shown in good scientific literature. And then there's also evidence that shows that it's good for heart disease. The, who would have thought that eating cheese and bacon and eggs would be good for heart disease, right? Well, it all has to do with inflammation. If we don't have the inflammation from all the sugar and the carbs, then our arteries work better and our cells are functioning better, but we also improve our lipid profile. Remember, we're reducing our triglycerides, and even if cholesterol is going up, we're reducing the kinds of cholesterol, not just LDL, but the specific LDLs that aren't measured in a general lipid profile that are actually bad for our heart. So we're doing ourselves a solid, solid service. It is really powerfully good for the heart. Then we have the daunting thing that nobody really wants to talk about because it's sad and honestly hits home for me, and that's cancer. It's got some powerful anti-cancer properties. Okay? I lost my dad to cancer, so I don't just talk about cancer willy-nilly and say that things are gonna cure cancer unless there's good evidence. It's called the Warburg effect. Cancer likes sugar, likes glucose, it fuels it. Deprive yourself of some of that, and your body can utilize the fats a little bit more and starves off some of the cancer. Again, that's a powerful claim to say it starves cancer, but it is reducing at least the glucose that would feed the cancer. Then, of course, there's the foundation of the ketogenic diet and how it was discovered within the medical community, and that's epilepsy. Okay, So if you know someone that has seizures, they're definitely going to want to utilize the ketogenic diet. And lastly, Alzheimer's disease. Okay, Alzheimer's disease, dementia, okay, and even Parkinson's disease, which is the fastest growing neurodegenerative disease out there, all can have massive improvements with the ketogenic diet. In fact, there's case reports that show that people that have Alzheimer's see marked improvements in their life by switching over to a ketogenic diet. So, I mean, talk about an improvement in your life. Sure, maybe you can't eat the bread, but if you can actually, you know, remember things and remember what you ate, then I guess that's a big win, right? So anyhow, thank you for tuning in with this entire video. And if you have specific things that you want to learn surrounding the ketogenic diet, put them in the comment section below. And I do ask of you, please do check out ButcherBox and, and help support them just because they support this channel and they support a lot of the content that I create. So as always, keep it locked in here. I'll see you in the next video.